Have you ever played a game that freezes every now and then? This isn't because your PC isn't fast enough, and it can even happen if the game is optimised. I've spent the past six years creating a game engine, and I'll show you how to stop your games from freezing, and how much faster they can run when they don't. There's two pieces to this puzzle, and the first is best explained using burgers. Let's say you order a burger at a restaurant, and then you stand there waiting. And waiting. And eventually your burger's ready, and then you walk away and eat it. But you held up the line, the other customers haven't ordered yet, and their burgers could have cooked at the same time. The same problem happens to games. Let's say we have a game that renders a blocky, voxel world. This function runs constantly and renders a mesh onto your screen. There are no issues until you place a new block. A new mesh has to be sent to the graphics card, and this is where the line gets held up. Just before the new block appeared, the whole screen froze. This is because we start sending the new mesh to the graphics card, then try to render it straight away. It's like ordering a burger and trying to eat it before it's cooked. The chef isn't ready, and neither is the graphics card. This changed how I thought games worked. Before I looked at this code, and thought since the transfer mesh call runs instantly, doesn't that mean that the transfer is done? But it's not, we've only submitted our order. So how do we know when our burger is ready? Some pubs will give you a device when you order your food. It has a flashing red light on it, and it changes to green when your burger is ready. So first we'll order a burger, and then get a device. Then we'll relax and have a drink, until the device flashes green. In computer land, this device is called a fence, and it lets us know when an operation is complete. Before, we were doing the equivalent of this. It's clear this will freeze the game when we can see this while loop, but it's hard to know what can cause a freeze when there's underlying asynchronous things happening in the background. To stop games from freezing, we'll need two meshes and a fence. Let's call the meshes A and B, and render one of them at a time. On the right the monitor has mesh A inside it, and mesh B is sitting below it looking pretty. The value of render A controls which mesh is rendered. When we place a block, we don't have to update both meshes just the one that's not being rendered, and in this case it's mesh B. We can update mesh B as much as we like, and the game will run smoothly, because we're not rendering it. But if we try to render mesh B too early, the game will freeze until the transfer completes. So let's create a fence after we start the transfer. When the fence signals, we know the transfer is done, and we can render mesh B. The only downside is it takes a few frames for this transfer to complete. But most games you've played have this delay, and you've never noticed. But we've solved the first piece of the puzzle, and it won't freeze again. But it still won't render smoothly. I'll play it frame by frame so you can see what I mean. Each mesh is rendered twice in a row. This means the camera is moving around at 60 frames per second, but the mesh is only updating at half that. It's like a pub with only two fry pans. If two burgers are cooking and a third customer arrives, they'll have to wait. The kitchen runs at full capacity, it's just not accepting any new orders. Likewise, the game runs smoothly, but it's not always showing a new mesh. There are two ways we can solve this. The first is to have 50 pans, but that's a waste because most of them will never be used. The second solution is more efficient, but we need to clean up our code first. Let's make a new mesh class that handles updating and rendering a mesh. This class has two fences, so we can know if a mesh is transferring or rendering. Our two meshes that used to be called A and B are now stored in this array. When we place a block, we need to check which mesh we can update. This is like the chef checking which pan is empty before cooking more meat. To do this, we'll loop over the array, then check if each mesh is updating or rendering. If not, we can update it without causing a freeze. Then the array is sorted, so the most up-to-date mesh is at the start. Since the array is sorted, we can render the first mesh that's ready. Now let's try using three meshes. It's better, but sometimes a mesh is still rendered twice in a row. We don't always know how many meshes we need. We could just allocate 50 of them, but that would be a waste of memory. Instead, we'll change our array to a list, and if all meshes are in use, we'll create a new one. We're now rendering a new mesh every single frame. In this case, we needed four meshes, which means the first burger finished cooking before the fifth customer arrived. This is now running at 15,000 frames per second, while continuously streaming new data to the graphics card. You can run these demos yourself and experiment with the code. Details are in the video description. This is just one of many optimization tricks, and this video on screen has three more that you can apply to any game.